Hey to hey to hey, it's Chrissy Lulu. First off, I want to apologize. I have guinea pigs being loud and obnoxious drinking behind me. I just filled their water bottle, so hopefully it's not too loud. Oh, yeah. Um, so here is week two of dogs. <laughs> um, I have been having a lot of fun with drawing them, but I think Maybe at this point, I'm almost hitting a bit of an art burnout. <laughs> uh, I wasn't pleased with all the dogs this week. I was most pleased with the Akita and the Aerodale Terrier from this week. I'm trying to think of all the ones I did. I did a minute order of Akita, Aerodale Terrier, uh, Corgi. I have seven in this week's video. So, it's a lot to remember. And then, next one was the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. He looked pretty purple to me. Oh, the Vishla. I really like the Vishla from this week, too. Um, the Shih Tzu. And, finally, the one I did just today. Um, the Border Collie. So, those are the seven breeds I did this week. If I didn't get to your favorite breed, we still have half the month left to go. More than half. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got tons of dogs on my, my queue. I'd suggest maybe trying not to request anymore because I already have... There, I have over 30 on my queue, but... Yeah, I think... The ones that turn out the best for me are the ones that... I like the most. For the most part, like the ones that I feel a connection with, I feel like turn out feel turn out the best. Like, I mean, I don't have any connection with Vikita, but like I saw this breed and I was like, oh my gosh, she's beautiful. And like seeing the Akita Inu, which is the Japanese dog, I decided to do the American Akita instead of the Japanese Akita. Just because the Akita Inu just look like a bigger Shiba Inu, and then that's already in my queue. So, I decided to do the American one, and the American one is just as cute. My hat so much fun drawing him, and I think he turned out well. Um, I really like the fur texture that I ended up with for him, so that's fun. Um, Airedale Terriers, um, my connection with them is my babysitter when I was a kid had one. Her name was Ginger. She was the sweetest thing in the world. Um, she lived pretty long too. So, yeah, I think she looked, uh, she looked into her teens, um, from what I remember. It's been a long time since I've seen one, but I was like, very like nice and nostalgic to look back on them. I just throw out of them and everything. It was like, they're nice. And just how curly their hair is. I love that kind of texture. I think that's kind of another thing, is like, I want, I want the texture. Um, um, as if you don't know, I don't think I've mentioned it, but one of my favorite things to draw is like, it's, it's like such a weird thing to like, like, but I like, like drapery and stuff. Um, we had to draw lots of drapery in my intro drawing class, so that's kind of where I learned. I actually really enjoy just drawing the way, like, clothes fall on a body, the way a blanket is just draped on something. That kind of also goes for, I guess, for textures and stuff. I really enjoy kind of trying to create that kind of texture that it's got. Um, as long as it's got kind of like the volume, like with the area of Taylor Terrier, it's like very curly, but like the arms are really poofy. Um, I'm sure you can probably see that when you see him, but, um, the other one that really turned out well was the Air- er, no, not the Airedale Terrier. I just talked about that, huh? The Vishla. Um, so, funny story. Most Vishlas are actually pretty skinny, and they, they look nice. They're, like, pretty lean and a little muscular. Um, but anyways, we had to reset one of my mom's coat dogs and he was a trip. 
his his name was Jeff. He was a fish left. We she she called him sausage. But his owner called him sausage. Sausage dog. We called him princess. Because he was a princess. He liked to prance around. And if you don't know this, dogs walk on their tippy toes. But he was like super light on his feet all the time. He was always seen like and he was fat. Like not just like a little overweight, he was like obese. He was like not healthy. He was just such a dog. Such a bad beggar. Um, with begging, he'd be like in people's laps at the table and we'd be like, Jack, go to bed. So he'd scurry off, scurry out of the room, kind of upset, and then you know, a couple seconds later you'd get this head coming around the corner. And just looking in to the kitchen and watching this eat. And then he'd slowly get back to where he was and get back into your lap with his head in his begging. And then you'd have to be, Jack, go to bed. And the worst part is, is he didn't, he may be fat, he may have been fat, but he didn't want to eat his own food. There was plenty of times where I had to like slightly wet his food so he liked it, but he didn't want to eat it eat it himself. He wanted you to pick it up and feed it to him. So there were so many times where I had to pick up his food and like hold it for him to eat. He was a spoiled little brat, but cute nonetheless. Um, one more thing, even though he was a male dog, as you know, male dogs typically, when they're, they're peeing, they lift their leg and do their business. Jack did what I like to call the Superman pose. He just he just walk and then he'd like keep his back legs out and then freak out. There were times where he tried to pee on stuff, like he'd try and pee on my mom's flowers and my mom's like, no, 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 no. He'd lift up his leg, try and try and aim and pee. He'd pee straight below him. He had no aim. He was he was well-deserving of the nickname Princess, I think. But, yeah, that's kind of experiences surrounding the dogs that I did this week. But with all the other ones, the ones I don't think turned out as well, I don't have any connection with them at all. So I think that was part of it. Um, I feel like just because stuff hasn't been turning out, I might be getting a burnout, a bit of a burnout, but it might just be because I'm not as passionate about what I'm drawing. Because it's one thing that is important for your work. You can't just draw stuff for the sake of drawing. You need to you need to want to draw it and you need to kind of like the subject you're drawing. Like if you're drawing stuff and it's making you miserable, like why draw it? You know? Um I mean, it is important to do, like, still lives and stuff, but, like, if you don't want to do a whole project just based on still life, you don't have to. Um, I mean, it is important to study them, and it's important to do, like, fully rendered things of them, but you don't have to spend eons perfecting it like you might with, like, a finished piece of artwork that I'm really passionate about everything. Pretty much with a lot of my life drawing, life drawings, um, I typically spend um, two and a half, almost three hours on them normally. I spend all that time in the studio. I don't normally spend any time outside of the studio on just simple still lives or like marble drawing and stuff, so it'll be where I got is where I got. So I mean, I will have a video in the future, I've already kind of planned it. Um, I accidentally deleted the footage I had recorded for it though. Um, I did some, I had recorded myself doing some of these, like, do these um, model sketches. And then I deleted all the parts. <laughs> um, because I was running out of space on my computer I had a ton of mermaid files, so I was deleting them all, and that was in that folder, so I deleted that too. If you watched my um, Art Supply Sunday 
if you've watched previous videos, I mentioned I accidentally deleted all the footage for that too, but I have backups on my computer, so I was able to recover that, but I wasn't able to recover the other stuff because I hadn't backed up yet. But, yeah, technology. Uh, I have so many problems with it. I lose everything. I lose everything because of technology. It's no fun. I've, I've lost my heart. My, my computer died on me. I've had plenty of flash drives die on me. I've had an SD card die on me. It's just, I feel very unlucky with technology. Today's video is not talking about technology. It's talking about dogs and art burnout. I am so off topic, my ears. I'm so sorry. But yeah, um... Even if you're doing a challenge, even if... Kind of what I want to say is, um, if you are starting to feel like you are overworking yourself and you are not enjoying what you're doing or you just need a break, don't don't feel bad dropping out the challenge and doing that. Um, you don't have to complete a challenge on your first try through. Um, that being said, like it's always good to push yourself. It's not you don't want to just stick within your comfort zone. You want to go outside your comfort zone. That's the only way you're gonna grow. But don't push yourself too much. Like you know, like uh, I don't. I'm not gonna stop this. That's not what I'm saying. Um, it's going to be very difficult these next couple of days and weeks to get everything done. I have an 8-hour worksheet shift tomorrow, and this weekend I have a bachelorette party and a bridal shower and everything. I'm not getting married, it's not me, um, but that's for a cousin, but lots of stuff to do, and then I can mold your life around it, so I think next this next week I'm going to try and talk about more instead of art burnout and stuff and feeling like you're burning out. Um, if you if you feel like you're burning out, and you need to you need to take a break. Don't don't feel bad about giving yourself that break. And even if you need to, you can just do some sketches to try and like, work it off. You don't ever want to kind of push yourself to do something that you're not in the mindset to do. Because sometimes, sometimes you have bad days. Um, we all have bad days with art. Um, me especially, I have bad days. Sometimes uh, I can't get anything right. I had days where we have a live model there and I'm getting frustrated. Oh my gosh. We have a live model here and I can't get anything right out. Nothing is turning out right. But we all have those days. So, just give yourself time and patience. But yes. Next week, I'm going to try and talk about kind of fitting art into your life when you feel like you have no time to actually fit the art in. Um, because sometimes it happens. Sometimes you've got to deal with life, but I mean, if you try hard, there's always that time where you can squeeze stuff in. But yeah, um, I'm not there yet, so yeah. You'll have to just tune in next week. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to keep up um, live with my drawings and everything and seeing how I'm doing with this Dog Days Summer Challenge, follow me on my Instagram. The link is down below, but if you don't feel like looking at the description, it's Russian Mango 4 and that's Russian Mang 04. Yeah, um, so that's my username on there, and then I also just had a big post on Tikina. Go check that out. It's a lot of art, um, stuff that might not post here yet, and stuff that is not posted on my Instagram. So if you want to see this art that I did, go over to my Instagram or go over my DeviantArt. Um, that's also in my description. Um, it's CC Okonaha. Okonaha is spelled wrong because I was 13 and dumb. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, um, Kona, it's like Konoha, like, Naruto, because I'm, I'm sorry. Um, you'll, you'll see, you'll see my description on Deviant Art is, I was, I once was a teen in Yubu. Yeah, um, it's K-O-N-A-H-A. So, yeah, um, anyways, check out the links in the description. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a comment if you wanna 
tell me what I can improve or whatever. Comment down below with whatever you want to tell me. Um, or if you're interested in purchasing any of these pieces, I would be interested in maybe selling them for $50 for the originals. Um, that is a very loose number, it's not set in stone. I'm still working with it, it's bound to change on the most um, but yeah, subscribe if you want to keep updated and see more, and hit that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload. So yeah, I'll see you guys Saturday. Bye!